We got good news if you're a U.S. fan and bad news if you're a Mexican fan. Alejandro Sendejas has been included in the U.S. men's national team January camp alongside Brandon Vasquez if you need something else to either feel happy or sad about. So it looks like there is uh, no more confusion about which nation Zendejas wants to represent. I'm pretty sure that Hercules Gomez from Football Americas was the one who came out with this report, but if that's not true in post, I will put a pinned comment down below or something to the actual source. And I gotta ask you guys for a favor. Let me know down in the comments if this is a bigger W for the United States or if this is a bigger L for Mexico. Because personally, I feel like it's a bigger L for Mexico. There's a bunch of reasons why I think this is really bad for Mexico, but I think the number one reason is that Zendejas is legitimately contending for serious minutes with the Mexican national team. I feel at best case scenario with the U.S. men's national team, Zendejas is the third option. The starter is, without a doubt, Tim Weah, probably for the next six years, barring some absolutely astronomical change in trajectory for both players. Well, with Mexico, he's competing with Tecatito, and he's getting a little older, coming off a bad injury. And who else has he got? Uriel Antuna. Like, I think Zendejas is better than him already, so I would say he's locked down the number two position at worst. If you guys aren't familiar with the entire Zendejas saga, which I really feel like is an appropriate word for what's happened, basically, he was born in Juarez, moved to El Paso when he was a kid, broke into the FC Dallas Academy, and represented the U.S. men's national team at multiple youth tournaments, I want to say, alongside Christian Pulisic and Tyler Adams. Now, that's where things get weird because from FC Dallas, he transfers to Chivas. And if you guys don't know, Chivas, Guadalajara is one of the biggest clubs in Mexico, and they only have Mexican players, okay? It's kind of like Bilbao in Spain in La Liga. They only have Basque players. It's, pretty, it's a very similar thing here with Chivas. And apparently part of this transfer package was a agreement that Zendejas was going to then switch from the U.S. men's national team to Mexico and start gearing up to represent the senior team. And he did represent the senior team. He was called up, I believe the first game was 2021 against Ecuador in a friendly. Then FIFA get involved because they're like, yo, this is a U.S. men's national team youth player. What is he doing representing Mexico? He has not filed a one-time switch. Now, this one-time switch thing is very important because if you guys remember, if you've been watching either Debal TV or Football Americas, you would know there was a big scandal with Tata Martino and Zendejas over this one-time switch. And this happened last season with Zendejas while he was playing very well for Club America. And from what I remember, he was like approached on a bus or something and asked basically on the spot to sign this one-time switch, to which Zendejas intelligently decided not to do because why would you make a decision like that on the spot without talking to family, probably your agent, a lawyer even? I mean, I'm not signing anything, right, unless I know 100% what it is. Tata Martino then came out in a post game and had a really weird comment referencing Zendejas and saying what he was doing was extortion um, because Zendejas apparently didn't want to sign this one-time switch document unless he was guaranteed to be called up to the Qatar World Cup. Then the America coach came out and was like, yo, Tata, watch your mouth. Basically, be careful with what you say about these players, especially my players. And the entire thing was just extremely messy. And when I saw Tata Martino in the whole extortion quote, I knew it was over for Sendejas in Mexico. Of course, I still prayed that I was wrong and he was going to put that to the side after Tata Martino departed, but you cannot publicly, nationally embarrass a player like that, especially one that is not even contractually obligated to play for your team and expect him to have some blind loyalty to you and to choose you. And the most messed up part is I feel like if this doesn't happen, he probably does end up choosing Mexico organically after the next manager comes in. Because of what I said at the very beginning, he is more likely to become a star Star to get playing time for Mexico. That's just the reality of the strength of the two national teams right now. And so now it looks like Anthony Hudson or somebody else from U.S. soccer, uh, and Greg Berhalter always said that he was in constant contact with Alejandro Zendejas. You know, they've spoken to him and he has agreed to join the U.S. men's national team at this camp, which I'm not sure the legality of that. I don't know if this forever permanently cap ties him to the U.S. I, I don't know because it's a non-FIFA sanctioned international break so i don't i don't know all the technicalities of this but the fact that he's doing this kind of tells me that he's made up his mind unless the man is playing 4d chess and it's like with a girl posts a pic of her and her ex so that the current guy that she's talking to sees that gets really jealous and then decides to finally ask her to be his girlfriend I, unless that's happening i feel like this is done bro it's it, it's finito it's fiend it's done and this along with brandon vasquez these are two serious talents that the u.s are are gaining and you know bravo i don't blame 
any of these players for picking the United States. I really do not. And as much as I want these players to pick Mexico, because I'm a Mexico fan first and foremost, I don't blame any of them for picking US men's national team. In fact, I think there are plenty of benefits, probably dozens of benefits to choosing the US over Mexico. And when it comes down to this ongoing dual national war, if I'm if I'm tallying up the score lately, kind of like with the whole US-Mexico rivalry, you gotta say the US has been winning. If I think of the three biggest names that they've gotten recently, Ricardo Pepe, uh, Brandon Vasquez, and Alejandro Zendejas, those are three very good players. If I think about the three big ones that Mexico have gotten recently, it's it's who? David Ochoa, Julian Araujo, uh, Efrain Alvarez, not scrubs to any degree, but when you're talking about a guy with Brandon Vasquez, I don't even know what his stats from the MLS last season, crazy, Ricardo Pepe playing regularly in Europe, now Alejandro Zendejas, who is one of America's best attacking players, one of the better players in Liga Mekis last season. I wonder if there's going to be any response to this coming out of Mexico, because I feel like this should be setting off alarm bells, because like I said, Zendejas should have been a layup, not just because he's Mexican-American, but because he's been playing in Liga Mekis for years now. Um, and, and had actually been called up to represent them in two different friendlies. And now he's kind of slipped through uh, the FMF's fingers, and now he's representing the U.S. He's a Yank now, playing for the Stars and Stripes. There's going to be some pretty big dual national decisions coming up. Jonathan Gomez, Real Sociedad, Richie Ledesma at PSV. And if both of those players pick the United States, <sighs> massive dub massive dub for the u.s and massive l for mexico but you guys let me know what you think down below in the comments leave a like if you enjoyed this video hit subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys in the next one